So you get this idiot judge who's like, woohoo, I got my moment in the sun, right? I've never been so famous. I've never, never been so popular. I've never gotten invited to so many little dinner parties, cocktail parties, because I am now a celebrity amongst these leftists. And then you got this Letitia woman who's just rabid absolutely rabid saying, I'm going to go seize this. I'm going to go seize that. She thinks she's Hugo Chavez the second. Let's watch her here on ABC News talking about how she's going to seize things like Trump Tower. Four days after a judge ordered Donald Trump to pay $355 million for a decade of fraud, New York Attorney General Letitia James says she's prepared to do everything she can to make sure the former president pays his fine, including, she told us, seizing the buildings that bear his name. If he does not have funds uh, to pay off the judgment, uh, then we will seek, uh, you know, judgment enforcement mechanisms in court, and we will ask the judge to seize his assets. Wow. Okay, Letitia, tell us how you really feel. So you have a rabid, rabid, politically ambitious prosecutor who's going to do everything her in her power to try and take this guy down. And when I talk about rabbit and I talk about politically ambitious, I've played this for you guys before, but I want to play it again. And you know, I'm going to keep on playing it because this proves the point. When he goes back and says this is election interference, he has every right to say that, every right, because this woman has made it extremely clear how she feels. I mean, this is disgusting talk coming from the mouth of Letitia James. He's called me venomous. We will fight back to your attempt to bring Trumpism to New York City. He's called me disgraceful. I will that they stole the Supreme Court seat. called me radical. Listen, yes. we know he's crazy. Yes. We know he doesn't have a sound mind. Yes. We know he's out of control. Yes. We know he's losing it. Yes. We know his days are numbered and we will come together. He's called me a racist. We've got to stand up to an, an administration which is too male, too pale, and too stale. <laughs> You gotta be kidding me. I mean, who, who the heck is this lady? How does she have a position like that? She's going after a former president of the United States, making us look like a laughing stock throughout the rest of the world. We really are no better at this point than any kind of banana republic. You know, I've told you, I've, I've done a lot of reporting on these banana republics, a lot. And we're, we look like Brazil, for goodness sakes, Lula, who wound up in jail along with his vice president, Dilma Rousseff, she also wound up in jail. And now Lula comes out of jail and he's president again. I mean, how, do, how are we any different at this point when we have rabid prosecutors like that? That is not, not how this was set up to be. So it is critical that this thing makes a speedway for the appellate court. Like, like should have been there yesterday. We knew they were going to appeal, et cetera, but I'm just happy to see it's finally going through and they got to take this case and they got to take it fast. She has given him 30 days. I mean, there was some back and forth there. Was she even going to give him the 30 days? It's typical that you would. And she's trying to get her money now, right? Because she wants him to have to sell everything he possibly could sell because let's face it, nobody has 400 and what is the number? $464 million just hanging around in cash. I mean, listen, I mean, I don't care how wealthy you are. The reality is this. Your money's doing a lot more for you, even if it's just in a CD, for goodness sakes. OK, so you don't just have that money hanging around in cash. That's not realistic to assume. So he has to somehow liquidate something in order to get this or he's got to get some kind of bond to cover him. And the bond estimate, because you get a factor in interest, that's upwards of half a billion dollars, a half a billion dollars, this woman and this idiot judge who's just, I mean, do we have him smirking? Because this was the best, you know, he's smirking. He's so happy. Here he is in court. They're talking to him. Look at this. Look at this guy. Ah, mugging for the camera, mugging for the camera. He's so happy. He finally is getting somebody to pay attention to him. And he's coming out with an outrageous verdict. I mean, ultimately, 
What really happens in my estimation is that this case is proven to be so highly politicized that the appellate court says enough already and throws it out or hits him with some very minor fine. Letitia James has proven how political she is and how vindictive she is, right? The court shouldn't be vindictive. I mean, she ought to take the high road. She got her way. And what is she doing over the weekend? Can we show these tweets? This Letitia James is out there tweeting this and it's disgusting. $464 million, $576,230.62. And she keeps updating it each and every day, you see? Because she wants everybody to know there's more interest. It's plus 114000 So the next day, she sends out this. And then she keeps doing it and doing it. So, whoa, we're glad you can do math. That's a new one. Most Dems can't. Letitia James is actually hurting herself with tweets like this. She is proving, absolutely proving the vindictiveness of who she is and what she's trying to achieve thereby lending, I would say, some opportunity to Donald Trump's lawyers when they go to the appellate judge and they say, you know, this is kind of messed up because these people clearly have it out for him. This is not about protecting the citizens of New York. This is not about protecting shareholders at Deutsche Bank. This is about one thing only, and that's getting Trump. That's all this is, ladies and gentlemen. So think about that. We are living in a society right now where a prosecutor like her has been so emboldened and you have judges that have their political biases that have been so emboldened by the environment in which we now live that they are going to do crazy things like this to try and bankrupt someone so that they don't run for president. It's really pretty darn disgusting. And ultimately, I think, quasi-illegal, you are going to have the appellate court say, okay, enough already. But what kind of damage is done in the interim? And I think that's when you get back to election interference being something quite real. Because there's a lot of damage being done in this moment in time to him, to his stability, to his financial stability. He's got to now have have some kind of likely lien that's going to be put on Trump Tower or Mar-a-Lago or any of these things because he's going to have to come up with the money, even if it's just to have some kind of bridge for 30 or 60 days, they're going to want collateral. And then the question becomes, oh, <laughs> is, this, is this collateral, right? Because Letitia can come out of the woodwork and say, no, you know what? I think Mar-a-Lago is worth $9 million now. I mean, who is she to decide, honestly, what Mar-a-Lago is worth or not worth? How do you like that? The next time you try and get a home equity line of credit on your house, you have to deal with the threat of some rabid political prosecutor saying, "Uh -uh, uh-uh, uh-uh, your house is not worth $500,000. How dare you say it's worth $500,000? I think it's worth $450,000. Boom, throw her in jail. Come on. It's disgusting, it really is.